hazards and control measure of scaffolding erection. Dismantling activities. Scaffolding erection. Dismantling hazards. Lack of communication. Substandard or defective materials. Collapse of scaffold. Incompetent personnel. Unstable and uneven ground surface. Blocking emergency equipment. Access route. Fall of personnel. Floor. Hole opening. Unauthorized entry to work area. Inappropriate access. Simultaneous operation. Unauthorized direction. Modification of scaffold. Ergonomics. Slip. Trip. Fall. Working on red tag scaffold. Scaffolding erection. Dismantling control measure. Obtain valid work permit prior to work commence and shall comply with permit to work procedure. Before starting activity TBT and TSTI shall be conducted to identify and understand hazards and control measures. All scaffoldings shall be erected by competent scaffolders with approved third party. Erection. Dismantling or modification works shall only be conducted by scaffolders under a competent supervisor. All scaffolding materials shall have approval certificates are available at working site. Safety, fire protection equipment and emergency exits shall not be boxed in to cause restricted access to these facilities. Before erection starts, scaffolding material shall be inspected to ensure that it is of the right type and in suitable condition. Bent tubes or weakened by corrosion and damaged couplers and boards shall be rejected. Scaffold shall be erected on foundations as far as possible be leveled and adequate to carry the load imposed. Shall provide signage scaffold erection. Dismantling in progress and barricade the area where erection. Dismantling is in progress. All employees involving this activity shall wear acquired approved PPE. Sole plates, where acquired, shall be placed underneath the base plate on two adjacent standards. Where a scaffold is erected in an area where it is likely to be struck by a vehicle, the base of the scaffold shall be properly guarded off using solid barriers. The barrier shall be illuminated with flashing warning lights. Vertical distance between ledges, lift height, must not exceed 2 meters. All tie connections shall be made with right angle couplers and shall be established that the strength of the structure, building is adequate to sustain the loads, which will transfer to it. All scaffolds shall be braced in both directions. Whether facade or ledger to ledger braces shall extend to the full height of the structure and shall be repeated at a maximum distance of every 10 meters. All working platforms shall be closely boarded with boards butted together end to end. Boards shall either be cut to fit around standards, pipe penetrations etc., or have the gaps filled in with the use of approved and suitable wooden boards. Each board shall be securely clamped or lashed. Shall provide guardrail protection such as, top rails must be 38, 45 inches above the platform surface. Mid rails must be installed at a height approximately midway between the top rail and the platform surface. Toe boards must be fitted on work platforms with minimum height of 150 millimeters. Shall install green mesh or net from top rail to toe board to prevent fall of tools or materials to ground. The vertical height between ladder access platforms shall not exceed 6 meters, and shall extend approximately 1 meter above the working platform and be secured so they cannot slip. Shall ensure that the scaffold construction and strength is suitable for the purpose to which it shall be used. Scaffold and scaffold components shall be capable of supporting without failure its own weight and at least four times the maximum intended load. Whenever possible, competent scaffolders shall work from the minimum of a three-board run.
It is not acceptable for scaffolders to be perched on tubes, unless a fall arrest device is provided and secured to a suitable anchorage point at all times. Ladders will be properly lashed throughout the vertical height of a scaffold as it progresses. Ladder shall be used by scaffolders to gain access to the working level. Where scaffolders are erecting, dismantling or modifying a scaffold, whether a slung or cantilevered section or crawling around on a pipe bridge or other structural steel work, in all instances, where there is a possibility of falling more than 1.8 meters, shall wear a full body harness with double lanyard and must be hooked at 100% tie, off at all times. Red tag shall be attached during erection. Dismantling or modification of scaffold and only scaffolders have access to the scaffold being erected. Where a scaffold is left in an incomplete state, the bottom ladder shall be removed and a notice shall be secured to the lower lift stating danger in complete scaffold. Keep off. Where one section of the working platform is incomplete, access shall be gained to the completed section provided that a stop end, preventing entry, is placed over the working platform at guardrail height. A notice stating danger in complete scaffold. Keep off shall be secured to the stop end in appropriate language. Safe distance shall be maintained from overhead electrical lines and cables. Toolkit must be used while working at height and hand tools lanyard shall be used to prevent falling from height. Avoid stacking materials on working platforms to avoid falling object hazards. Floor. Hole openings shall be covered with toe boards, or with secured planks or wooden board, with a size of 3. 4 inches thickness, hard barricade and with caution signages. Prior to removal. Modification of safety facility, authorization shall be obtained. Simultaneous work should not be conducted, no person to be directly under the erection area or vice versa shall lower all scaffolding materials carefully to the ground. Lose. Dismantled scaffold materials shall be lowered to the ground and not stored on the scaffold. Scaffolding couplers shall be tightened with proper non-sparking tools. Shall clear all materials and debris of platforms before dismantling commences. Dismantle in the reverse order of erection. Last up. First down. Separate and dispose of any damaged components. During dismantling, no component, which endangers the stability of the remaining structure, shall be removed. Do not remove any ties or braces in advance of general dismantling. It may be necessary to provide additional ties to give stability during dismantling. Drop zone shall be identified and barricaded with caution signatures to prevent unauthorized entry. Scaffolders shall wear full body safety harness with two lanyards at all times. When changing positions shall secure one lanyard before unhooking and rehooking the other. All employees working at affected areas shall be evacuated prior to start of modification works. Extension or alteration of scaffold is not permitted on the approved part of scaffold being used at that time. Scaffolding supervisor or inspector is only authorized to remove or change the scaffold tags. Green tag shall be removed by scaffolding supervisor and place red tag if dismantling and modification is to be carried out on the scaffolding. Workers shall be reminded on daily basis that unauthorized modification is prohibited, if job required modification they should call competent scaffold supervisor. All scaffolding material shall be properly and neatly stored on which it will not present a tripping hazard or block access routes. Ensure that the task shall be carried out with proper and adequate illumination shall comply with HSE plan and HSE management system. Illumination in the workplace guideline shall be complied.
All manual handling works shall comply with manual handling procedure. Ensure that tagging system is known by all personnel through safety induction and reminding them by TSTI and or TBM. Scaffold supervisor shall ensure that completed scaffold that all applicable safety measures such as handrails, tow boards, ladders, etc. have been provided prior to placing a green, safer use tag on all scaffoldings meeting scaffolding standards and requirements. This tag is to be attached at some point near the access ladder where it visible to anyone to climb the ladder. Green tag shall be signed and dated by the responsible scaffold supervisor. Scaffolds shall be red tagged do not use while being erected, dismantled and, or has been found to be defective that needs rectification. All scaffolds shall be inspected on a weekly basis. As necessary as it is required by the responsible scaffold supervisor and shall be re-inspected, re Check the integrity of the platform by the qualified scaffold inspector. The signature and date of inspection shall appear on the tag. Where a scaffold does not meet safety standards the tag shall be removed and a prohibition notice placed at the access to inform personnel not to use. Scaffold register shall be maintained by scaffold supervisor showing record of all inspected scaffolds and shall be updated regularly. The scaffold inspection tag shall show the subcontractor's name, scaffold number, the area, type of scaffold, inspector's name, and date of inspection and signature to avoid transferring to other area. In the event a scaffold or platform cannot be erected in accordance with the applicable codes or standards, that is, handrails or equivalent fall protection. The responsible supervisor shall coordinate such condition to HSE representative for approval. Employees shall not be permitted to work on a red, tagged scaffold. Any scaffold that is not tagged, regardless of reason, shall be assumed to be unsafe for use. Employees observed working on a red, tagged scaffold and caught tampering scaffold tags are subject to disciplinary action. Scaffold after alteration or modifications shall be placed with a new tag by scaffold supervisor. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.